would be stop lying to yourselves. Amen. Stop lying to yourselves. There are many people who feel within their heart that they are as good looking as they were the day they graduated from high school. (laughs) Stop lying to yourself. Amen. There are many people who shortly after they get married, they feel like that they still wear the same size clothes that they did when they was a teenager. I wore size 29 when I got married in the waist. I was about this big around. Listen, I can't go to the store now. Now, it took me just a little bit of time to learn this, but over a period of time and, you know, someone telling me, you don't wear that size anymore. You know, I was only lying to myself after a few years to think I still wore 2934. (laughs) There are some people who you ask them how much they weigh or the conversation of weight comes up, they might quote a weight that they weighed way back yonder. Well, the last time I weighed, well, when was the last time you weighed? 35 years ago? It's time you stop lying to yourself. You don't weigh that anymore. Uh, you don't wear the same size clothes anymore. There are people every day who are lying to themselves when they say, I love the Lord. <laughs> There are people who are lying to themselves every day when they say, I want to be in the house of God more than anything else. Brother Pulliam, you didn't have to say that. Listen, the message this morning is stop lying to yourself. There's people today who say, I want to go to heaven. More than anything. This may seem like a hard message when we get into it in a few minutes. I hope and pray that it's received in love. There are members of this church. I have been here three and a half years. There are members of this church who have not been in this church since way before I ever came here. But if you talk with them, they will tell you, I want to be there. You hear tell of them going everywhere else. Doing everything else. But not once in three and a half years have I seen them in the house of God. That's sad. The title of my message this morning, once again, stop lying to yourself. You're not hurting the pastor or the deacon or anyone else here. You're only hurting yourself. Look with me in the book of James chapter 1, verse 22. I hope you pray for me. I feel the Lord this morning. When I walk away from here today, I want to be able to say God was in it. If not, 
I just seem to shut the book right now. <laughs> if God's not in it, <laughs> I don't want any part of it. It's not worth it. <laughs> but in, in James chapter 1, verse 22, listen to what the Word of God says. But be ye doers of the Word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. <laughs> huh. But be ye doers of the word. Not only hearers, not just hearers of the word. Listen, there are Bible scholars out there in around us, you know, that can most likely tell me more about this Bible than than I'll with my mentality than I will ever learn. <laughs> but if you are not applying the word, yeah. all that you hear, all that you know, if you are not applying that and living it, then you are only deceiving your own self. Now look back with me in verse 21. I want to back up one verse. Wherefore lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness and receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your souls. Now, James did not say here, here, with meekness, the engrafted word. No. He uses the word receive it. You know, sometimes uh, if I don't concentrate real hard, Crystal around the house may say something and I never, although it penetrates my eardrums, it never sinks in to what she has ordered me to do. Or lovingly requested me to do. But James says receive. The word of God. The engrafted word of God. This word here receive is. Interpreted or, or, or used here from the original Greek word. Which, and the definition of this word. It means to take hold of. Receive the word of God. Take hold of the word of God. It means to grant access to something. Here it's referring to the word of God. Receive the word of God. Grant access to the word of God when it comes your way. Grant access that it might affect you. It means to embrace the word of God, to make one's own, to take upon one's self. You see, there's a whole lot of people hearing some preaching this morning. It's, it's 1130 Eastern Standard Time in the great United States of America. We live in, on the Bible Belt end of this nation. <laughs> the word is being preached Loud and clear this morning. There are thousands upon thousands upon thousands of people that are hearing Amen. the word. <laughs> right? But James says, receive it. Uh-oh. Take hold of it. Grant it access into your life. Embrace it. Make it your own. Take it upon yourself. David said, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Yes, amen. How much of the word of God are we actually receiving? Yes. Hmm? Hearing the word is very important. We're blessed. I just said we, we live in the Bible belt. <laughs> 
There are many people in this world on this planet earth that are not as blessed as you are to hear the word of God. But hearing it and receiving it is two different things completely. Now at the end of this message today, when the word of God is shut, there will be two groups of people in this building. <laughs> right? There will be two groups of people left in this building right here. One group will be those who have heard the word. And then hopefully there will be a group who has received it. You believe that? I hope. Brother Pulliam is wrong this morning and there's only one group and everybody has received it. I'll gladly say I was wrong. <laughs> but we must understand there's difference in hearing the word and receiving it. Let's go back and read verse 22 again. Be ye doers of the word and not hearers only Deceiving your own selves. The most attentive and the most frequent hearing of the word will not save you. Unless we are also doers of the word. You can hear a sermon every day of the week and an angel from heaven be the preacher. Yet, if you're only hearing it, it will never save you. My thought went back when I wrote this down right there. I made a little note right there in parentheses. Jonathan Edwards. He preached a message many years ago titled, Sinners in the Hands of an Angry God. There, I don't know how many was in attendance there that day. Does anybody know? But there was a lot of hearing that went on. <laughs> but listen, there was some receiving <laughs> what they were hearing. <laughs> and as they received it, they began to cry out and to moan in the spirit of God and to weep and to grab a hold to pews in front of them because they felt themselves Slipping off into the miry pits of hell. <laughs> How would you like to sit under a message like that? I would. Receiving what you're hearing. Listen, when you receive this word, it's going to bring about some effects in your life. Hearing it won't. Only hearing the word of God won't. But when you begin to receive, James said, receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your own souls. We can hear it. We can remember it. We can memorize it. We can repeat it. We can testify of it. We can write it. We can preserve it. We can preach it. We can commend it. We can pass it on. But until we become a doer of the word, you're still only a hearer. <laughs> Paul saw a, a, a possibility. He said, unless I preach to others and become a castaway myself. You see, we can use the Word of God in every kind of aspect possible, but unless you become a doer of the Word, well, then you're still only a hearer. A mere hearer is a self-deceiver, thinking that filling their head with notions is sufficient. When their heart is empty of good affections and their life 
fruitless of good works. I'm going to read that again. A mere hearer is a self-deceiver. Thinking that filling their head with notions is sufficient when their heart is empty of good affections and their life fruitless of good works. Amen. We're talking about people that are hearing the word of God. Amen. You know, it's, it's possible for your head to be full and your heart empty. Mm -hmm. huh? right. Sure. Right. In the end, self-deceit will be the greatest deceit of all. Amen. I say to us all this morning, stop lying to yourselves. Stop believing that only hearing the word of God will be sufficient. That retaining the word of God and, and uh, gaining all of the knowledge and understanding that you can of the word of God will be sufficient. It will not. Back to verse 22. Be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man, beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholdeth himself and goeth his way and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, he, being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. Hmm. Only looking in a mirror and seeing the flaws or the spots of dirt on your face that reveals but not washing them off will not benefit you at all. This is a great illustration of those who are hearers only and not doers of the word. Many sit, many hear. Conviction is present while the word is being ministered. The acknowledgement within themselves of their sin and misery and of their need of Christ. But when the hearing is over, convictions are lost, affections and good intentions vanish, and all is forgotten, and they forget what manner of man they were. Hmm? Listen, it's one thing to be at church every time the doors are open. To sit on the pew, to hear the word of God, to amen the word of God, and to allow the word of God to affect your life. And you, the conviction of the spirit of God is there, and, and, and you admit within yourself your shortcomings. And when the word is, when the preaching is stopped and the words cease, if you're not careful, in only a few minutes, most likely before you get out those doors, the conviction is gone. <laughs> Right? Well, see, you've only been a hearer of the word. It would be a sad case to get up in the morning and look in the mirror. I forgot my mirror. I was going to bring one today. I wanted maybe someone to look in it. But to look in that mirror and see your hair is all a mess. This eyebrow is intertwined with this eyebrow. There's sleep and crud in your eyes. You've drooled all night and it's stuck to the side of your face. And Nick, you'd be a sad case if you got up every morning, looked in the mirror and seen that and said, and it just went straight on to work. That'd be sad, wouldn't it? The Word of God says, a man who is a hearer of the Word and not a doer of the Word, he is just as foolish as that. <laughs> huh? 
Why even look in the world? Why even look in the mirror? Look in it. You see anything needs changing? <laughs> Look in it again. Any changes taking place? You ain't done nothing since you looked in it last, have you? <laughs> there are people who has heard the word of God 50, 60, 70, 80 years. <laughs> Isn't that sad? When they should receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save their soul. No, they're only hearers. Listen. And forgetteth what manner of man he was. Now, now I want you to understand what the word is saying here. Look into the mirror and walk away and forget what manner of man he was. Because now he has become something that he is not. <laughs> right? He looked in the mirror and he saw what he was. But see, he's walked away. He's forgot what he was. Is that what the word says, Brother Nick? He forgetteth. What manner of man he was, that's because when he walked away, now he's become something that he's really not. But he thinks he is. You know why? He's lying to himself. Now he's become something that he is not. Why? Because he's deceived. He's lied to himself. He's deceived the mirror revealed unto him what he really was, but he's forgot about that. He's went on his merry way. He's pretending now to be Clark Gable. Right? Somebody that's got your Bible, I want you to read verse 25 for me. Real loud and clear. But a doer of the what? Word. You mean word, right? Word. What's your Bible say? Work. Work. A doer of the... Now verse 22 now says, Be ye doers of the word. Now what's verse 25 say, Nick? A doer of the work. A doer of the work. Right. Oh. Now that's real confusing, ain't it? <laughs> <laughs> you see, the word is going to require some doing on your part. Amen. And now it's not just the word, but now it becomes the work Amen. that you are required to do, that the word of God has revealed unto you. Right. You believe it's going to take some work to get perfected? You better believe it. It's going to take more than just reading the word. It's going to be some work involved. Amen. Look with me in Matthew chapter 7. Verse 21. Now everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord. shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. You see, there's difference in saying and doing. Big difference. Not everyone that saith. You see, there's a lot of people saying the same thing they've been saying all of their life. Amen. I got saved when I was a wee little bitty chap. Have you been a doer of the word of God ever since? 
Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not professed, prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. You see, saying and doing are two different things, in case you didn't know. Amen. You need to know that. Amen. Stop lying to yourself. Amen. Unless you are a doer of the word, you're only saying <laughs> and hearing and saying and hearing and saying. You see, we must be a doer, right? Amen. There, Jesus said, or, 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 or many said unto him, or he says, will say unto me, we've prophesied, we've cast out devils, many wonderful works have we done. <laughs> you see, many claims that there's a work going on in their life. That they're involved in the work. Well, Jesus said, depart from me, ye that work iniquity. You see, that's a different work. <laughs> right? What's iniquity? That means rebellion, lawlessness, not allowing the word of God to affect you and become a doer of the work. But you're out here, you're involved in another work. Stop lying to yourself. Amen. There's going to be one person suffer from that lying. You know who? These self-deceivers will have the audacity to lie to the Lord. You see, if you lie to yourself long enough, you'll start lying to everybody else too. Even the Lord. See, Jesus said, they're, they're going to say unto me, many of them, it's going to be many of them that's going to say unto me, we did this, we did that, we did this. Hmm. They will have the audacity to lie to the Lord boldly, rudely, disrespectfully. What are they saying? We're the ones who kept the ball rolling. <laughs> We're the ones who kept the doors open. We're the ones who paid the light bill. We're the reason that church is there today. Mm. Oh, God help us. Well, what about a doer of the word? Are you a doer of the word? Have you received the engrafted word of God? Have you embraced it? Have you made it your own? That it could save you? Just because you say something, Jesus said, many is going to say to me. <laughs> Just because you say something over and over and over countless times again does not mean it is true. There's a little child's story of the emperor in his new clothes. You've heard that little fable, haven't you? This emperor, this king over this great kingdom, he was so wrapped up in clothes. I, the, I believe the little story says he had a change of clothes for every hour of the day. He was more involved in that than, than ruling the kingdom. These two swindlers come to town. They, they tell him they've got some new cloth and some, some new stitching and some new talent that's never been seen before. And they can create him clothes like he's never seen before. Not only that, but this material that they have is such mystical uh, uh, material that anyone in the kingdom who uh, is a lesser of intelligence or they won't even be able to see the material, it will appear invisible to them. <laughs> right? The king gets so wrapped up in this, he hires these two swindlers to make him some new clothes that he's going to 
parade in front of the whole kingdom. They don't have any cloth at all. Right? They take all of the cloth away and they set up looms and they begin to pretend to be weaving. He sends somebody down there to check on, see how his clothes is looking. One of these intelligent ones in his kingdom, they go down there and they, the first thing they think is they don't see any clothes at all. But they're not about to say that <laughs> because they don't want to appear to be stupid. <laughs> they don't want to appear to be, you know, that they're the only ones who can't see them. Oh, they're beautiful, King. I've never seen anything like it. It's beautiful. Well, the story keeps building until the day that he's supposed to parade through the kingdom in his new clothes. And he comes and they talk him into taking off his clothes and they're going to help him dress and he's doing like this, stepping. The whole time, there ain't nothing there. And he walks out and he takes this, he begins this procession down through the kingdom. By this time, the word has spread how beautiful the king's clothes is. And everybody's oohing and on. Oh, he looks great. Oh, he's marvelous. Oh, look how it fits. And a little child looks up at his father and says, But dad, he doesn't have on any clothes. What? Of course he does. But someone hears and says, No, the child is right. I don't see any clothes. And the first thing you know, everybody says, He doesn't have on any clothes. But see, by that point, the king is so wrapped up in all this going on, he knows he's too far into this procession to turn around now. <laughs> oh. Listen, just because you say something over and over and over for countless years does not mean it's true. Amen. Stop lying to yourselves. There are professional liars. Did you know that? <laughs> there are those who are professional liars. They have perfected the art of lying. They can sit at a polygraph test and give a false answer to every question that is asked them and that polygraph test will show he's telling the truth. He's telling the truth. He's telling the truth. You believe that? I looked it up. I googled beating a polygraph test. They tell you how to do it. Some of you may need to know, so I'll pass this on to you. Just joking. Change your heart rate. Now you have the ability to change your heart rate. You can work yourself up or you can calm yourself down. Change your heart rate. Change your respiratory rate. Change your blood pressure. Change your sweat level. And in, in other words, calm yourself down. Get control of you. What you're saying, it don't have to be the truth as long as you're in control of what you're saying. Anything you say will appear to be true. <laughs> right? Oh, yeah. There's, there's professional liars out there. Listen, stop lying to yourself. <laughs> stop lying to yourself. And saying everything is all right with me and my God. Hmm. Galatians 6 and 3 says, For if a man think himself to be something when he is nothing, he deceiveth himself. If a man think himself, in other words, If granddaddy said I was a good little chap, if daddy always bragged on me and said I was a good boy, if my wife brags on me and says he's a good husband, if my children brag on me and say he's a good daddy over and over again, I think I'm good. You see, 
that becomes an opinion of myself. <laughs> right? If, if a man think himself, well, I've been taught it all my life. I'm a good fella. I think I'm a good fella. But if a man think himself to be something when he is nothing, he deceiveth himself. Hmm. If you think you're a doer, if you call yourself a doer, when the whole time you're only a hearer of the word, you've deceived yourself. You're lying to yourself. Jeremiah 17 and 9. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? How many of us in here today has a heart? Anybody got a heart besides me? Every one of us has got a heart. The Bible says that heart within you is deceitful above all things. Listen, the greatest thing that you have to fear that would cause you to fall away from God or never be in fellowship with God. The greatest thing that there is in your life that you have to fear. It's not the Antichrist. It's not the mark of the beast. It's not any kind of political power or movement that's going on around you. It's that heart. <laughs> It's that heart that beats right here. Thank the Lord for my old former pastor. He used to say all the time, my biggest problem is Alan Anders. <laughs> He's Alan Anders, not me. He's my biggest problem. <laughs> he had a, a huge church. One time we run 120 in Sunday school. I've probably 60, 70 members. I can't remember. But out of everything, he said, my biggest problem is me. <laughs> Listen, you better bet your biggest problem is that heart that beats within you. It will tell you, I'm a good fella. I'm a good gal. Yes, it will. I don't care. What sinner you are, what things may be going on in your life that you know of and acknowledge. Somewhere down deep inside, in that heart, there is something that beats, that tells you, besides all of this, I know I'm guilty of all of that. But really, truly, I'm a good person. Yeah. Every one of you, your heart will tell you that. In spite of any wrong that's going on, <laughs> in spite of any shortcoming there is in your life, in spite of anything that you know to do good and doing it not, in spite of all of those things, that heart will still tell you, well, I'm, well, I'm a pretty good gal. I'm a pretty good fella. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? You see, you don't know it as well as you think you do. <laughs> Have you ever heard someone say, I know him better than he knows himself. <laughs> I know her better than she knows herself. You can just about predict what some people are going to do before they do it. Right. Right? Right. Well, a lot of people saying the same thing about you. I, I, I know him too. <laughs> You see, we don't even know ourselves as well as we think we know. God help us. That heart that beats within you, it can be stubborn, it can be mad, it can be evil, 
It can cause you to lie to yourself and to God. You believe that? In Acts chapter 5, Ananias and Sapphira, they were both victims of the power of a lie. They both, at separate times, Ananias first and then later on that, in a few hours, Sapphira, his wife, came in and done the same thing. But they walked into the house of God. There was a great movement of the Lord going on amongst the church. People were selling all they had, bringing the money to the house of God, and it was being distributed among everyone. They had all things common, and uh, no one was saying within themselves, that's mine, that, that's mine, that's mine. A great move of God, right? right? Ananias and Sapphira walk into the house of God. There was something within them. They wanted to be a part of that. But they boldly walk into the house of God and begin to lie. Mm. You see, just because you walk into this church house and say anything don't mean it's true. Even about yourself. Right? But I want you to hear what Peter says unto them. Peter asked them a question. See, they walk in, they're talking to Peter. But Peter says, why hath Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost? Mm -hmm. You see, sometimes people, they live a life, they want to live a life in front of everybody else. And they'll go so far as to even lie to God and to the Holy Ghost. Why? Why? Because they have lied to themselves for so long. There's even a a, a degree of belief there within their own selves. They believe what they're saying. (laughs) But Peter said, why has Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost? Why have you allowed this, Ananias? Why hast thou conceived this thing in thine heart? Hmm? You see, that heart will cause you to lie to yourself and to others and to God, and it will only begin to grow and grow and grow and grow. You've ever heard the saying, if you tell one lie, you're going to have to tell another one to back it up and and the first thing you know, you're, you're living a lie. Hmm. But listen to this. Peter says, thou hast not lied unto men. And when I read that, I thought, well, you, well, Peter, they were talking to you. But you see, Peter's a little smarter than me. <laughs> he says, you haven't lied to men. Although you may have spoke it to me. What's he mean here? He says, thou hast not lied unto man, but unto God. What's what's he saying here? You see, the damage was not done with Peter. You see, Peter didn't strike Ananias and Sapphira dead. (laughs) The damage was not done to the church and to Peter. No, the damage was done unto God. The damage is not with man, but with yourselves and with God when you're living a lie. Galatians 6 and 7. I believe someone's mentioned it this morning already. Be not deceived. Now you see, the problem is being deceived. See, Paul here, he's, he's trying to warn us. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. Hmm. You see, you, you might live a lie all your life. 
You might live to be a hundred and still live it a lie. Well, everyone around you may believe it. Well, remember one thing. Don't be deceived. God's not mocked. You may be able to fool most of the people some of the time, some of the people most of the time. But God is not mocked. Stop lying to yourself and to God. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. How many wants to live in heaven forever and ever and ever while the ages roll on? Stop lying to yourself. If there's something in your life that's not right with God, stop lying to yourself. Uh, oh, it's going to be in your best interest to fess up now. You see, God's not mocked. You, many's going to stand before Him on that day and, and, and profess these things to Him. But they ain't going to make it true just because they say it. Paul spoke to the Corinthians, examine yourselves, whether ye be in the faith. Prove your own selves. Listen, you don't have to prove anything to this pastor. You don't, you don't have to prove anything to me. 